I've heard a lot of sugar being toxic stuff. I just rolled my eyes. It seems like everything is toxic these days. After all, water will kill you if you overdo it. But things can easily go beyond control during the holiday season. Cookies, cakes, drinks. As much as I love sugar, belly fat is never my friend. During the holiday season, I literally snacked every day and I felt bloated and sluggish most of the time. For the first time, I wondered whether or not the sugar can really make me happy. A meta study revealed no positive impact of carbohydrates on any aspect of mood at any time point following their consumption. For some reason, I do feel really happy when I was snacking. I just felt really shitty both mentally and physically afterwards. I've never tried to distance myself from sugar for a longer period of time. I was really wondering how my body would like it. That's why I quit sugar for 30 days. Here's what happened. First of all, let's get all the things that have added sugar out of my apartment. I finished most of them this weekend. I know I'm gonna start this non-sugar thing. Okay, pretty messy. This could be the one. My favorite butter cookie. Three grams of added sugar, of course. Cereal, 13 grams of sugar. The pizza from Trader Joe. Why does it have to have sugar in it? No, I'm gonna keep it and eat it tonight. My favorite toast. It's not that bad. Okay, I guess that's all of it. Tomorrow's gonna be a great day. Hopefully. For me, the most challenging thing was to create dessert after each meal. It felt like a meal is incomplete. And I'm a big snacker. I like to snack a little every day. Now I have to cut it out since almost all snacks contain sugar. But at least it's not that hard to control sugar intake in the meals because I cook by myself. I usually do meal prep on Sundays. For lunch, it's normally a quickly mixed bowl of food with salmon, egg, and avocado. I can't even eat kimchi because it has sugar in it. For dinner, it's a kale smoothie, toast, and another half of the avocado left for lunch. I also replaced the honey with salt and pepper. But yeah, the first day was not that hard. The second day was still okay. I just started missing the little sweets after the meal, the hazelnut sweetener in my coffee. And I hate stevia. I'm on campus today. I'm heading to cafeteria for lunch. People told me fish are dumb. They would eat all day long if you keep feeding them. I have no idea about that. I also don't know if I can survive in a room full of cookies and donuts. Anyway, it was highly difficult when you were allowed to look at the dessert right in front of you but not eat it. The craving was real. Hi guys, it's the fifth day. I'm having really bad cravings. All I want is a brown sugar boba tea. But no worries, I'm not gonna get it. I just wanna check if they have anything without sugar. Sorry, does passion fruit have sugar in it? Yeah, it has sugar. Oh, is it added sugar? Yeah, so, yeah. As my willpower was getting weaker, it was like a ghost haunting my mind all the time. I was wondering why quitting sugar is so hard. An astonishing study published at the University of Bordeaux showed when rats were given the options of saccharin and cocaine, virtually all rats choose saccharin. Even the cocaine-addicted rats prefer saccharin more. They speculated that the addiction to sweets results from an inborn hypersensitivity to sweets because our ancestral environments are poor in sugars. Sugar-rich diets stimulate dopamine, a reward signal in the brain, which could override self-control and lead to addiction. So sugar cravings is more than natural, which was almost decided by the poor sugar environment our ancestors lived in. So we shouldn't feel bad about ourselves if we cannot resist the temptations. But on another hand, 
If the craving is real, probably we don't have to stop the craving completely, but find a threshold which can satisfy our cravings without forming an addiction. If I were the reviewer of that paper, probably I would suggest the authors try out different concentrations of saccharin and find out the non-addiction threshold. From now on, I'm gonna be the rat. I'm gonna try some experiments on myself. The experiments I'm gonna try is First, find a healthy sugar substitute. Second, try different amounts of sugar to make my favorite cheesecake and figure out the best dose without forming strong addiction. Erythritol ranks first on my list. It belongs to a class of compounds called sugar alcohol. It's non-carogenic, has high digestive tolerance, and is even a free radical scavenger with an antioxidative effect. Although there are no observed side effects, overconsumption can lead to flatulence and laxation. In summary, it doesn't cause cavities or tooth decay, and even has an anti-inflammatory effect. It might be good enough to replace sugar as long as you don't overeat it. The next step, making cheesecake. I'll be making Basque cheesecake with three different amounts of erythritol using a keto recipe I found on YouTube. I will also leave a link below in the description box. The recipe is pretty straightforward and only requires less than half an hour for preparation. Okay, moment of truth. We've got three pieces of cheesecake here with different sugar amounts. For this one, it gets normal sugar amount. It has about 100 grams of erythritol for a 7 inch cheesecake. For this one, it gets 50 grams. And for this one, it gets 25 grams. Let's take a bite. It's definitely not sweet enough for me. I mean, I'm having desserts for the feeling of having desserts. It still feels creamy and has a texture of the cheesecake, but kind of wish it could be sweeter. Okay, let's try the second one. It definitely tastes better than the first one. I would prefer it to be sweeter, but we're looking for a cheesecake, which is good enough, but not like amazing. It's also the amazing feeling called dopamine surge, which make us be addicted. Let's try the third one. It's so good. It doesn't feel like sugar replacement, it just feels like the normal sugar. Maybe because you read it all, doesn't feel like a stevia, which can also give you a speck of bitterness. It would be the cake I like to buy in a bakery. But remember, our purpose is not to find a cake, which is amazing, but good enough. So I think I will just go for a second one. Three weeks into the challenge, it actually went pretty well, especially after I found healthy snacks that don't have added sugar. Things really started to look up and got easier. Later on, I discovered more healthy snacks, thanks to YouTube. Peanut butter banana rice cake tastes so good. Do you know frozen bananas just taste like ice cream? Also, you gotta try self-made popcorn with erythritol. It's like magic. What's funny is, sometimes I even forget to eat snacks after meals. I don't know if it's like forbidden fruit in fact. We just crave things we cannot have. Once we know we have options, we are more aware of our real desire. I feel my energy got more stable after quitting sugar. I'm no longer having a foot coma and didn't feel like sluggish at all even in the early afternoon. The 30 days challenge is done. It's definitely not as hard as getting up at 5 a.m. The biggest benefit I've noticed is that I've got more mindful of the food. I found myself starting to check out the nutrition facts in the grocery stores. I've also got more motivated to explore healthy snacks. It just feels so satisfying when I know my body is gonna like it. It's gonna be beneficial for me in the long run. Just I've never expected. I've saved more money on buying snacks. And also I've even saved more time on TV because I was always watching TV when snacking. You know, your hands were just too greasy to touch anywhere. But I still like snacks. I still like to explore the new boba shop with my friends. I feel like it's not only about trying new desserts, but spending quality time with your friends. So going forward, on top of being more mindful of the food, 
I think I will satisfy my sweet tooth once in a while, especially with my friends. But most importantly, do more exercise. The second challenge is done. So for the next challenge, I'm gonna try cold shower for 30 days. It sounds really scary to me, to be honest. But let's see how it goes. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.